Hello, my Likens. Welcome to another episode of the newsletter that it's also a podcast and it's morning. This one is titled Morning and Blue. You know, you can check out the written version with its images, which I highly recommend, of course, <laughs> especially because of the images, on tinyletter.com slash Miriam dash Navarro dash Prieto. I started writing this issue on August 29th and that day, for the first time in a long while, I was writing to you on my desktop with the window open and I was listening to the thunder and thinking, let it rain! Meanwhile, I was also listening to Jasmine Rogers' album Blood Red Sun, by the way, uh, which is amazing. Um, there are links on the written version. And later I changed to Bacquas's I Like Here Buried With My Rings and My Dresses, but more on that later. That day I felt like, I don't know why, I guess it was because of the storm, changing up the newsletter flow, so I started with the plants trivia. 1. Plants and colors I'm not making up. And here I urge you again <laughs> to look for the drawings I included in the written version, or at least go to my social media because uh, I will post it there, yes, definitely. So, um, this is not, even though it can look like it, <laughs> this is not one of those drawings in which I heighten the reference picture color's intensity. This drawing is based on a picture of a eucalyptus eglupta, also referred to as rainbow gum, and it's it's precisely like I uh, drew it. <laughs> According to Wikipedia, this is the only species of eucalyptus that can be found naturally in the northern hemisphere, and I take that means it wasn't carried here by human hands, though it's native to Philippines, Indonesia, and Papua New Guinea. Surprisingly, not so much really. <laughs> the specimens planted in Florida didn't grow to have the same intense colors as the ones growing in its native regions. Quelle surprise! It can grow up to 60 or 75 meters, which is like 197 to 2000... no, <laughs> 246 feet tall. Uh, sorry, I, I always forget how to <laughs> say the numbers in English. And this is because uh, its first 10 years of life, it can reach a yearly growing rate of 2 to 3 meters, which is 6 to 9 feet high, and up to 2 to 3 centimeters of yearly diameter trunk growth. And that is up to 1.18 inches, and in case you didn't know, that is a lot <laughs> of growth, of yearly growth for a tree. Its bark grows differently colored, thin layers each year. That is why in the drawing and in the pictures you can see patches of different colors, because the thin layers of bark uh, fall in some places, so the trunk appears cobalt blue, magenta and lemon yellow, uh, which I think it's most commonly known in English as canary yellow, but I think, I think you understood. <laughs> the pulp wood is mostly used in paper making and according to its Wikipedia page in Spanish, let me translate a little bit. If the area is the right one for this species, it can be used to restore the soil and in reforestation 
efforts that it's so cool. Using this color palette was so delightful, I may recreate it in another drawing, but I don't want to jinx it, so I won't say anymore. 2. Let the morning come. Now I want to talk about the first poem collection of my friend from Neil Hilborn's writing circle, Kikaman, that is titled exactly like that, Let the morning come. I'd like to start reading one of their poems from the book, a contern warning for allusions to self-harm and suicide ideation, so beware of that. Let's go. A Body Far Away by Kikaman Your body is a temple and my religion is called Far Away. We don't go together. Many of us clash. We bounce off each other. I never know what direction will be next. Flying into the arms of a friend. Is this called safety? A net too porous to hold me tight. Launching into the canal that slowly collects more trash. Perhaps they'll find parts of my being. When people go fishing for bikes, we grow bigger and smaller. A galaxy that's expanding and imploding at the same time. We are the result of the accumulation of prayers and death wishes, the build-up of scar tissue. You asked me when I'm at home, in this body, never. It fills me up with pride to announce, now that I finally read it, <laughs> that Let the Morning Come is amazing. It's a magnificent first poem collection. And I know it looks like every time I talk about my friends' work, I have to exaggerate. But really, they are all pretty brilliant. What can I do? <laughs> Let me quote um, what two people I hugely respect as artists and as human beings have written about Let the Morning Come, because they sum it up perfectly. In 2010, performance artist Marina Abramovic sat at the Museum of Modern Art for 736 and a half silent, static hours, while spectators took the chair opposite her, bearing witness. When I read Let the Morning Come, I am reminded of Abramovic, as the words inside contain an invitation to sit starkly across from the artist and peer in at the impossible humanness. There is a generosity in allowing yourself to be so fully seen, and this collection operates as a walking tour through Kika Mann's labyrinthine and beautiful brain. As the author transcribes both the madness of both the external and internal landscape, they carve out room for small joys, avocados, kombucha, magpies, poetry. Kika promises I will draw the flowers that come sprouting out of my head. And that is exactly what this debut collection does. It paints a picture of what can grow in the garden of a mind and willing to be tamed. Primarily written in a psych ward during a pandemic, these poems contain an introspection that could only be born from extreme isolation. This book makes a gift out of loneliness. And that is that. <laughs> I don't have much more to say because uh, Megan Fally, whom I just quoted, wrote it perfectly. She's the author of Drive Here and Devastate Me and a couple of other poem collections and soon a memoir, by the way. Interesting. <laughs> and when you think about Kika's collection, you realize it was written in isolation. It tastes like a paradox, given how solid you can feel the author's hand on yours while reading it. That is why, and take this from an occasional yet professional performance artist, <laughs> aka me, comparing this book to a piece of performance art is very apt. This collection brings with it the whole body of the writer, in all its, sometimes, never without good reason, 
not so pleasant yet prone to being in all human glory. And let me read you also what another writer said about Let the Morning Come. In this book, morning is simultaneously rejection and celebration of new distance. These poems illuminate both isolation and the ways we can try to reach beyond our loneliness. Kika writes, you asked me when I am at home, in this body, never, and spends the rest of the book figuring out where home is. If you've ever watched an airplane get smaller until it disappears, then you need to read these poems. And this was written by Neil Hilborn, author of Our Numbered Days and the Future. So, two of my poetry mentors say this about a book. It means the book is more than worth reading. And I included a few links to, to find Kika's book and their other work in the written version of the newsletter. Um, but let me tell you quickly, you can find Kika's blog on kikawinling.wordpress.com twitter.com slash kikawinling and instagram.com slash kika.vr So go follow them, go read their book, please. 3. The Wrath of My Gentle Vengeance now I have to ask you again to go to my social media or my newsletter archive because I need you to look at this drawing I'm going to talk about mainly because I'm very proud of it. Uh, why not say it? <laughs> so a couple of months ago I found by chance a visual artist nicknamed Matt Charcoal and I got some commanding arts to try out his technique or something close to it. And this is how this portrait of rapper and producer Bakwas came to be. I stained the paper with charcoal and smashed it along the surface with my fingers, which is how math charcoal starts most of his drawings. Uh, you should watch some of his videos on YouTube because it's absolutely incredible. Though I, my version is much more controlled because I'm still a control freak, TM, <laughs> and I yet have work to do to fight it. But it's been years since I last touched a charcoal bar and let me tell you, I absolutely loved the experience, partly because it felt natural, much like coming home, because uh, it may be a while, but I used a lot of charcoal, but also because it's my way to pay a homage to Bakwas. So, what's a black trans woman doing rapping in Canada to heavier rhythms than a lot of extreme metal bands? Well, breaking our hearts and then repairing them with catharsis. Beware, overall, on her body of work, uh, content warnings for some potentially tra traumatic um, stuff like substance abuse, overall physical violence and specifically sexual violence, racism, transphobia and a whole lot of flesh-based metaphors that make you question how metaphoric they are. Her out-of-state name is Ashanti Mutinta, born and raised in Lusaka, Zambia, left to study to Canada at 17. These circumstances, plus her gender fuckery, which is one of my favorite expressions, by the way, <laughs> makes for a body of work that puts on our faces a series of social intersections we don't usually confront, or at least I don't. And learning about other people's realities is one of the reasons you should listen to her music. But the main one, it has to be that it has been a long while since nothing has, and pardon my friends, fucked me up this hard. <laughs> 
I mean, you can go to YouTube and look for the live launch of, of her last album. I lie here buried with my rings and my dresses. And if you go to the ending of the song Blood on the Water, I think it's around the 10 minute mark, Bakwas kneels down, I guess incarnating the Christian God or one of his ministers, and twists the words of a traditional prayer so they actually say what we, Vivians of God's path, <laughs> can actually expect from the church. And what a battle I have to wage against my text processor because no, I don't want to write anything Christianity in capital letters. Now, let me read you that um, blood on the water fragment, although, of course, Bakwas does it much more amazingly. But let me try. I am your Lord and Savior. You will bow to me, or I will be forced to show you how useless you are. My only job is to remind you how insignificant you are to me. Whatever you feel does not matter to me, not your innocence or anything that you keep dear to you. Your only purpose is to obey or face the wrath of my gentle vengeance. I mean, it gives me shivers. <laughs> wow. Um, I could say a lot more about Badwas, but for now let me just quote a piece of her bio. Yes, her bio section on her website. Her work is based on the horrorcore, hip-hop and industrial metal genres and includes a culmination of themes around the intersection between faith, identity and queerness. The poetry of her lyrics are the beginning of a cathartic healing process in which she is granting herself permission to be angry. And off to the last section. 4. The size of what is not there. Since we're talking about being angry, <laughs> some Sundays I go to a writing circle hosted by my friends Greg and Carly. You can find them on the links on, the links on my written version of the newsletter and their writing circle is called Sunday Spoons. So on the last session, I mixed up the two exercises Greg proposed. One was writing a poem using, oh my God, how do you say fesuras <laughs> in English? Um, cesura? Well, <laughs> one was writing a poem using cesuras which are basically pauses within a verse marked with punctuation. And the other one was writing a poem about something that makes us angry, letting ourselves say the stuff we'd like to do about it, even though we'd never actually do it. I also used a draft I started on the previous circle with Neil Hilborn, and that prompt was about using the notion of another poem of comparing the size of fetuses to unexpected objects and the other poem is gestational size equivalency you can find it on poets.org and the author is Catherine Pierce so um, yeah usually fetuses and babies are compared to the sizes of fruit or food and you know like the baby is now like a lentil uh, or the fetus is now the size of an apple and um, yeah but Catherine Pierce uses some rather surprising objects <laughs> so I tried to do the same and I'm going to read you a fragment of the poem I wrote that day Dear Buddy your baby is the size of your desire to conceive human life, so about the same size of a black hole singularity, so about the same size of your anger when squeezed down in family reunions, chemical reactions, soon to be explosion, daily looked over, 
so distant it may not even be there. I'm a bit sad because when I put this in the Spanish section, the wordplay in the ending got totally lost in translation. So enjoy it here, please. <laughs> um, also, um, in the written version, you can actually see the um, slashes I put in within the verses, making it make much more sense. <laughs> so I urge you to read it there. And that's all for now. I remind you, if you haven't subscribed yet to this newsletter, you can do so on tinyletter.com slash medium dash navarro dash prieto. And you have to wait for the email tiny letter will send you. Beware, because it may end up in the spam or promo folder. And click on the confirmation link inside. You can also read my previously sent issues in my archive to get a sense of it. Um, on that same website, uh, there's a link to the archive. And well, you know, you can give the podcast version a listen or, or even subscribe on Anchor, YouTube and Spotify. And thank you for reading me each month or whenever you remember to do so, because that's great too. And also thank you to my Patreons, Jorge, Larry, Rufi, Lucia, Chelsea, Catufo, Katia, Ari, and the last one to join, Manuel, who's always ready for art to surprise and marvel him. And it's something artists truly appreciate, so thank you. Also, thank you to my unofficial art sponsor, my personal Medici, my uh, <laughs> whatever, Nacho. And thank you, Raul, for wanting to read the final results even after witnessing the whole process. You are all amazing, the best. And you, person reading or listening to this, can also join this merry troop if you are able and you would like to support me on my creative endeavors by making a monthly donation of one, two or four euros, uh, which is more or less one dollar fifty, three dollars or five dollars fifty. Well, US dollars, I mean. And uh, if enough people do that, I won't have to work on other things I'm not really as good at. So I would be very thankful. You can find me on Patreon, on patreon.com slash Miriam Navarro Prieto. There's an H warning and it's there because the platform asks me to put it because I sometimes discuss poetry with sexual content. What can you do, huh? Um, <laughs> yeah, that's all. So until next time, bye.